welcome back to another video lecture of financial market and instrument in our previous class we had discussed already about the merchant banking and we come to know that it is a specialized service that the financial institution are providing in which along with the financial services or we can say along with the banking services it render the service of counseling or what we can say advisory services and in that we had discussed about what the merchant bankers are what is merchant banking how it is defined by various regulatory bodies and what are the key role that the merchant bankers are carrying on or what are the qualities that the merchant bankers must possess to be a good merchant bankers and what we will look into a merchant banker to take assistance of the service of merchant banking we had a clear idea on the concept of merchant banking in today's class we will discuss in detail what is the role and what are the functions of the merchant banking so without much delay let's start the class of today's video lecture that is on role and functions of merchant banking so as we had already discussed this merchant banker has been defined under the security and exchange board of india that is merchant bankers rule 1992 as any person who is engaged in the business of issue management either by making arrangement regarding selling buying or subscribing to securities as a manager consultant advisor or rendering corporate advisory service in relation to such issue management so this is what the merchant bankers has been defined by the sebi rule specifically for the merchant bankers now what is the role of merchant banking in appraisal of projects so in detail we will look into that that uh, merchant banking as a commercial activity took shape in india through the management of public issues of capital and loan syndication and it was originated in 1969 with the setting up of the merchant banking division by anj greenlays bank and the main service offered at that time to the corporate enterprises by the merchant banks included the management of public issues and some aspects of financial consultancy so this is how the merchant banks have come into its inception in india and as we are looking into that it had its origin in the year 1969 and it come into its sport Uh, by the ANJ Greenlays Bank, and by, at the time of its inception, the main service that is offered by the merchant banks is the public issue management and also some additional financial consultancy services that is been rendered. So, like that, it has come into force. And in the early and mid 70s. it witnessed a boom in the growth of merchant banking organizations in the country with various commercial banks financial institutions and brokers firms entering into the field of merchant banking so reform measures were initiated in the capital market from 1992 so as we had come across that this concept of merchant banking or this uh, service of merchant banking come into force since 1969 but the real revolution or the reform measures are initiated in 1992 and starting with the conferring of uh, statutory powers on the security and exchange board of india and the repeal of capital issues control act and the abolition of the office of the control or capital issues now what this merchant bankers and capital issue management is the capital issue management is comprising of the effective management of market related factors and what are this market related factors if you look into they are the transition to a rolling settlement on the equity market 
impact on different classes of market users obtaining a liquid bond market impact of reforms of 1990s law and taxation taxation of capital legal reforms political economy of financial sector reforms market design market inefficiencies and trading profits so these are the related factors of the capital issue management that the merchant bankers are doing or dealing with now what is this issue management if we we'll see the management of issues for raising funds through various types of instruments by companies is known as issue management and the function of capital issue management in india is carried out by the merchant bankers so if we'll see the function of the issue of capital or the management of the capital issues is been carried out by these merchant bankers and these merchant bankers have the requisite skill and competency to carry out this capital issues management so these merchant bankers as we had already discussed they are having various competencies or they are qualified bankers or qualified advisors those who have competency to to manage this capital issues and the funds are raised by companies to finance new projects or expansion modernization Uh, diversification of existing units and so on various projects or various issues are been catered and looked after by this merchant bankers now as we see the definition of merchant banker as contained in sebi rules and regulations 1992 clearly brings out the significance of this issue management as it defines that any person who is engaged in the business of issue management either by making arrangement regarding selling buying or subscribing the securities as manager consultant advisor or rendering corporate advisory services in relation to such issue management and these securities issues are been classified into three categories that is the public issue the right issue and the private placement so this could be the various classification of the securities issue might be that that it might be a public issue it might be a right issue or it might be a private placement that in these three ways the securities are been issued now we will look into that what is the function of this merchant banker or what are the functions that these merchant bankers are rendering so the different functions of merchant bankers towards the capital issues management are many so these are the following functions that the merchant bankers render towards capital issue management that are like designing capital structure capital market instruments issue pricing book bu book building preparation of prospectus selection of bankers advertising consultants role of registrar bankers to the issue underwriters to the issue and brokers to the issue so these are the various uh, functions that the merchant bankers are rendering towards the capital issues management so what is this designing the capital structure so if we'll see the term capital structure refers to the proportionate claims of debt and equity in the long term capitalization of a company according to weston and uh, brigham capital structure is the permanent financing of the firm represented primarily by long term debt preferred stock and common equity but excluding all short term credit so this common equity includes common stock capital surplus and accumulated retained earnings so decisions on this capital structures if we'll see the decisions that are rendering the use of different types of capital funds in the overall long term capitalization of a firm and known as capital structure decision so any decision on capital structure are based on different principles so what are the principles that are there for capital structure if we we'll see that are the cost principle 
the control principle, the return principle, the flexibility principle and the timing principle. And the factors affecting this capital structure decisions if you see the major developments taking place in the economy affect the capital structure of the funds. And in other words we can say the way the economy of a country is managed determines the way the capital structure of a firm will be determined. So what are the factors that are active in the economy which are influencing or which have effect on the capital structure if you see that are the business activity that are going on the stock market of that country the taxation system or uh, we can say the, the type of taxation that is going on the regulations that are there in the country the credit policy that is prevailing in the, uh, in the country and the financial institutions that are operating in the country. So these are the various factors that are active in the economy and that are going to have a influence or that are the factors that are going to affect the capital structure decision. Next we look into the capital market instrument. So these financial instruments that are used for raising capital resources in the capital market are known as the capital market instruments and the changes that are that are sweeping across the Indian capital market essentially in the recent past and uh, uh, something phenomenal. So it has been experiencing metamorphic in the last decade uh, thanks to a host of measure of liberalization, globalization and privatization that have been initiated by the government. So pro pronounced changes have occurred in the realm of industrial policy such as licensing policy, financial services, interest rate and so on. So the competition has become very intense and real in both industrial sector and financial services industry. So as a result of these changes, the financial services industry has come to introduce a number of instruments with a view to facilitate borrowing and lending of money in the capital market by the participants. So this types of capital market instruments if you look into there are various capital market instruments that are used by corporate entities for raising resources and that are like we can say the equity shares, the non-voting equity shares, the preference shares, the cumulative convertible preference shares, the company fixed deposits, warrants, debentures and bonds. So these are the various capital market instruments that are used by corporate entities for raising resources and uh, what these are if you will see these equity shares, these equity shares also known as uh, ordinary shares are the shares held by the owners of a corporate entity. Since equity shareholders face greater risk and uh, have no specified preferential rights, they are given larger share in profits through higher dividends than those given to preference shares provided the company's performance is excellent. Next is what is this non-voting equity shares if we will look, look into these are the consequent to uh, the recommendations of the Abid Hussein committee and uh, subsequent to the amendment to the companies act corporate management are permitted to mobilize additional capital without diluting the interest of existing shareholders with the help of a new instrument that is called as a non-voting equity shares. So such shares will be entitled to all the benefits except the right to vote in general meeting that is theirs. Now what is this preference shares? These shares that carry preferential rights in comparison with ordinary shares are called the preference shares and the preferential rights are the rights regarding payment of dividend and the distribution of the assets of the company in the event of its winding up in preference to the equity shares. So these are the preferential share holders or these are the preferential shares that are uh, been uh, there they are given preference uh, than the equity shareholders or the ordinary shareholders they are the one who are getting more privilege than the equity shareholders in terms of dividend that means when the company makes profit or when the company is earning 
then the preferential shareholders are getting the first preference of getting their share. They are not treated as the real owners of the company and they don't have the voting rights or any decision making power in the company. They are simply investing in the company for the sake of dividends. Now, there are different types of preference shares. So, if you see, they are cumulative preference shares, non-cumulative preference shares, participating preference shares, redeemable preference shares, fully convertible cumulative preference shares and preference shares with warrants attached. So, this, there could be various types of preference shares that are there. There might be cumulative preference shares uh, in which the dividends are been cumulated, there are non-cumulative preference shares, there are participating preference shares, there are, uh, there are preference shares or preference shareholders who are also are redeemable and also there are some fully convertible cumulative preference shares and there are also preference shares which have warrants that are attached to their preference sale. So, these preference shareholders are uh, again in are of various types like uh, we know that equity shareholders are of uh, ordinary equity shareholders or non-voting equity shareholders. So, like that these preference shareholders or preference shares are of uh, various category according to the type that they are getting the dividends or they are getting the, uh, the profit out of that. Next is company fixed deposit. So, this fixed deposit are the attractive source of short term capital both for the companies and the investors as well. So, this corporate favor fixed deposits as an ideal form of working capital mobilization without going through the process of mortgaging assets. So, the investors find fixed deposits a simple avenue for investment in popular companies at attractively reasonable and safe interest rates. Now, lastly, what is warrants? So, as we know that an option issued by a company whereby the buyer is granted the right to purchase a number of shares of its equity share capital at a given exercise price during a given period is called a warrant. So, these are the types of funds that has been generated. Now, next is the debentures and the bonds. So, a document that either creates a debt or acknowledges it is known as a debenture. So, accordingly, any document that fulfills either of these conditions is a debenture and a debenture issued under the common seal of a company usually takes the form of certificate that acknowledges indebtedness of the company. So, a document that shows on the face of it that a company has uh, borrowed a sum of money from the holder thereof open certain terms and condition is called a debenture. So, we discussed that uh, how important these merchant bankers are and what important is the their role and how they are functioning. So, they are assisting in the appraisal of the project, they are assisting in counseling, they are assisting in consulting and giving advisory services, they are helping in the designing of the capital structure and also help in the functioning of raising fund for the companies. Like how the issues will be made or we can say the issue management in specifically they are dealing with and they are carrying out or assisting the company or the client for the issue management. How they will publish the prospectus, the preparation of the pros prospectus, the management of the issue, whether they will go for private placement, public placement or they will go for right issues or how they are, what is the proportion of the issues they should go for, what, uh, how they are going to book building the issues, how they are going to execute all the issue management, every teat and bit is being assisted by the merchant bankers. And if you we'll see, uh, after the liberalization of Indian economy, that means 
the latter of uh, the liberalization in 1991, there is a reform or revolution in this merchant banking sector or we can say that merchant bankers have a prominent or promising role in the financial system. So, they are rendering or we can say in other words, they are shaping the capital structure of the country or uh, the capital structure or designing the capital structure of the financial market of India. So, this is how is the role and function of merchant bankers and this is how they are going to impact the financial and the more specifically the capital market of the financial market of India and they are going to play a very important and significant role in the development of the economy of the country. So, this is all for today's class. In our next class, we will be discussing some more interesting topics. For today, this is all. Thank you.